thanks everyone and good evening to all of you. I'm proud of you. You weathered that storm out there to get here tonight. It's either because you wanted to hear me speak or Murray or uh, good food, good drink, one or the other, I'm not sure. But uh, thank you very much for asking me to join you this evening. And as always, it is really my pleasure to be here. But it's also a pleasure to see all of you. And like many of you, I guess that we would all agree that we'd like to be meeting each other under better economic circumstances. I know that uh, you're following closely what's happening not only on the state level, but certainly around the nation. And uh, here at home, we all know that our economy is showing a few signs, positive signs, if you will, and a positive trends. The pace of layoffs in our state has slowed. The Dow has returned to somewhere close to the 10,000 level, although I don't know what it did today. Oh, great. It's down 100 and something. I'm trying to have a positive news message here. <laughs> Now the stimulus projects in Connecticut, we had a public hearing today and we talked about what we're doing and the jobs that are being created with that and more importantly for a lot of us, the jobs that are being preserved. And while the unemployment numbers in our state um, are far higher than any of us would like to see, we do take some comfort in the fact that they are still below the national average. But the fact remains that for too many employers and entirely too many families in our state, we're all still coping with the effects of the terrible economic slowdown. Of course, you don't need me to tell you this. I look around at a lot of familiar faces. I know the jobs that you do and the businesses that you've created, and you know it all too well. As business leaders, you're living it day in and day out. And I know that you know that I'm living it day in and day out as well. And what's frustrating for me, I think, and probably for you, is that the message of what's happening in our economy is not always getting through to all of the people under the gold dome just a couple of blocks from here. I think that the recent budget battle that we all went through, the very long budget battle that we went through, is probably ample evidence of that fact. Because while we now have a budget document, the simple fact is, is that we don't have a workable plan. We don't have a workable plan for reducing state government's insatiable appetite for spending. And I'll say it again. There is an insatiable appetite for spending. And in this economy, we simply can't do it. And try as we might to cut spending, try as we might to say no to folks, sometimes that message just doesn't get through. So while one budget battle may have ended, I'm going to tell you tonight that the real budget wars are just about to begin. Just yesterday, I saw Senator Meyer here, but I don't know where he is. Senator Meyer in the back. He said, I just got a letter from you today, uh, but I sent the letter yesterday. And in that letter, I sent to every legislator, uh, the le leaders and every legislator, to advise them of the new report from Moody's Investor Services. Now, some of you may have seen the article in the paper today talking about it, but Moody's has revised the outlook for Connecticut's general obligation bonds from stable to negative. That is not a good sign. Our rating on the current debt that we have has remained the same. We have a bond commission meeting on Friday. It is our hope to get those bonds out. We do not want our negative impact to uh, downgrade those bonds in the rating later. But Moody's, uh, in revising the outlook, said that Connecticut is not alone. There are eight other states as well. So we're not alone in our struggles. And as I just said to Senator Meyer, all we have to do is look at our neighbor, New York, not so far across our border. Uh, just as a side note to that, I want to share with you, I have a very good friend that when I was in the legislature, we became friends. She's an assemblywoman in New York. And I called her recently and said, what are you guys doing over there? For a number of reasons, but this, one, this happened to be about the budget. And she said, if I had one piece of advice to give you, Jody, she said, I'd love to tell you what you really need to do is cut, cut, cut. When we passed a budget, we cut some spending, raised some taxes, patted ourselves on the back, and went home. And she said, but we didn't cut enough. And now it's coming up to, do I dare say, an election year, and no one wants to have to raise taxes, but no one wants to have to cut spending. Governor Patterson has called the legislature into session for November 10th, and they are looking at trying to cut $3 billion from their budget. So you can see the portrait that's being painted 
not just in Connecticut, New York, and other states as well. But the language we got from Moody's was real simple. It said that the state budget deficit plugged, in order to pass it this year, is plugged with too much borrowing and too many one-time fixes. Let me be fair here for a minute and share with you. I make no apologies for using the one-time revenue that we had to use this year. Federal stimulus money came at a perfect time, and it helped us to balance our budget. And it helped towns and cities to keep them whole, especially in education funding. Borrowing, we had to borrow to pay last year's debt because we didn't do the difficult, and I say we collectively, didn't make the tough decisions last year. I had four deficit mitigation plans, three sets of rescissions that I have the authority to do. And oftentimes the legislature will say, okay, we'll take that, and we'll take that, but we can't take this, and we can't take this. So it kept leaving us with a balance of debt that ended up having to be borrowed. The budget simply fails to make the real necessary reductions in state spending. Instead, what we're seeing is that many times the legislature has decided we're going to cling to the status quo. This is not a negative to them. It just simply says that there is not enough willingness right now to face the fact that we can't keep spending money we don't have. This does this by a lot of different things, not just the one-time revenue, not just the borrowing that's in there, but unachievable savings that simply make unrealistic assumptions relying on unaffordable taxes. I want to give you an example. I've said this to someone outside a minute ago. They asked, what kind of things are not real, if you're talking about, in the budget? Well, the legislature assumes that we will lapse in the, the year by not spending all of this money. In years past, we've always tried to hold back a little bit from the agencies. But you can't hold back $500 million when you don't have $500 million. You can't say, Governor, Go sell some state assets. We expect you to collect $60 million to do that. Anybody interested in a state building somewhere? I've got some wonderful property that we might be able to sell to you. These are some of the things that are built into a budget that are unaffordable, unassumable, and can, are uh, unrealistic and um, make assumptions that we can't keep. 